the coastline. Those lucky enough to live near it enjoy the influence it has on their lives. The beach is probably the place you long for all winter. It's the place where you spend most of your summer, or wish you could. Some depend on the ocean and its beaches for their livelihood and their lifestyle. But there's a problem no beach lover can avoid. A problem called erosion. Erosion is caused by waves. Waves that change the shape of the beach by pushing sand further down the shore or moving it out to sea. Severe storms can cause erosion that destroys property by carving away the shoreline. Winter storms can eat away at your favorite beach, changing it from this to this. But sand is returned to the beach by the gentle waves of spring and early summer. The shoreline is then replenished. It's a constant natural cycle of building up and taking away. How can we understand what causes these seasonal changes? Is there any way to protect our beaches from erosion? And how can high school students play an active role in helping oceanographers to answer these questions? A group of students from Long Island's East Hampton High School has begun to do something about erosion. These students are compiling a coastal resource inventory, a collection of data on the movement of sand along East Hampton beaches. Once a month, students make a profile of the beach at many locations. To do this, they must measure the elevation of the beach every five feet. They start at the crest of the sand dunes and end up at the water's edge. When the information is collected, the students send it to the Marine Sciences Research Center at the State University of New York at Stony Brook. Here, scientists use the information for an important study on coastal erosion. The study was begun in 1979 and has been helping to explain seasonal changes on Long Island coastlines. The first step. Before beach profiling begins, careful planning is required. Professor Henry Bokanyevich and his assistants Mindy Zimmerman and Jay Tansky examine a map of Long Island. They will choose areas, stations, on the beach where the students will begin their work. Probably we'll pick up the effects of the jetty if we're too close to it. Let's start here. Next, the oceanographers choose a date for the monthly beach profile. A time of low tide yes, is best. Spring tide's on the 14th, and low water is at 1310. Good, then we can start by 12 and finish up by 2. Yes, that's right. During low tide, the entire width of the beach will be exposed high and dry. A date of exceptionally low tide is picked. These extremely low tides are called spring tides. Now it's time to hit the beach. The students are led by Anthony Minardi. Mr. Minardi is a science teacher at East Hampton High. The measurement of the beach profile begins. Each station is marked by a post that has been measured carefully before the students arrive. This enables the scientists to know exactly how high the post is above sea level. The students uncoil a rope from the post to the sea. The direction of the rope has been deep beforehand with a compass. Measurements will be made along this rope. Three students work at each station. Two make the measurements while the other records them on data sheets. First, the students measure the height of the post. This measurement will change as okay. sand is gained or lost around the base of the post. The measurements are made with two staffs. 
Each is marked off in feet and tenths of a foot. The staffs are connected by a five-foot string. The string is attached permanently to one staff, but free to slide up and down along the other. That's good. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Tighten it just for There is a small bubble level device hanging on the string. To make a measurement, one staff is held at the post. The second is placed down beach along the rope. The string is pulled tight. The free end of the string is then slid up or down. This is done until the bubble level tells the student that the string is horizontal. The difference in elevation of the beach between the staffs is then measured by the position of the string. This measurement is recorded. The students then move the landward staff up to the seaward one. The seaward staff is moved five feet further down the beach, and the process is repeated. These measurements are taken at 28 stations along the beach. Each group handles three stations. The process must be done over and over, once a month, every month of the year. This may all look easy. It's not that simple to get good measurements, though. You must always be ready to deal with problems. Changes in the beach are caused by waves. The waves themselves are also measured by the students. Visual estimates are made of wave height and wave angle. The wave watchers also time the wave period. Wave period is the time it takes for a wave to pass a stationary point. Let's get this line untangled. After wave measurements and beach profiles are recorded, they are sent to the Marine Sciences Research Center. Here, Mindy Zimmerman programs them into a computer. The computer prints out the information as a graph. This provides scientists with a picture of the sand buildup at each of the measurement stations. The sloping line on the graph matches the slope the beach had at the time the measurements were taken. By comparing graphs made with different measurements, Dr. Bokanyevich can see how the beach changes from month to month. This is station 18 for September. This station starts up on top of the dune here. Yeah, you can see the berm and the constant foreshore slope right in there. Watching the procedure is Dr. Jerry Schubel, director of the center. I'd like to give you an example of some After of one year of student beach profiling, enough data has been collected to prepare a report. Over the past year. Dr. Schubel explains the, the results of that report to listeners at the center. And his group. This slide represents the seasonal changes that occurred at one of the East Hampton Beach stations. This is station 19. And the changes in the beach are revealed by four different profiles made over a period of a year. The vertical difference represents changes in the elevation of the beach. And the horizontal changes represent changes in the, the width of the beach between January and May. If you compare the profile on the left, which was made in, on the 18th of January, 1980, with the profile on the far right, which was made on the 29th of May, 1980, you'll see that there's a large difference between the width of the winter beach and the width of the summer beach. Although the seasonal difference in the beach at East Hampton is very large, it was found that in the summertime, when the waves are smaller and less steep, that the erosional processes of the wintertime are reversed and that most of the sand that had been removed during the wintertime is returned to the beach during the summer so that the change in the beach over the year is very small. I see we have a question, yes. If most of the sand is regained, then why is erosion considered a problem? It's a problem because during the wintertime when the erosion is occurring, 
the loss of sand can be severe enough as to cause serious loss or damage of property. It can be even so serious as to break through the dunes, and the dunes are the uh, line of defense against the flooding of inland areas by the sea. That's why these measurements are so important to us. It sounds as though a coastal resource inventory is a pretty good idea for a student who cares about the environment. You'll not only learn about erosion, you'll actually be doing something about it. But there are a few things to consider before you and your friends become beach profilers. Beach profiling is more than just a trip to the beach. Scientists depend on the measurements to draw important conclusions that could affect our natural resources. They're counting on you every month, and you just can't disappear if you find something else to do. There's always the chance of bad weather on a day when you're out profiling. And when you're on the beach, your behavior represents your high school. Sometimes, you'll have to be careful not to get too enthusiastic about your work. But a coastal resource inventory is still a great way for students to get involved. Our beaches are a gift for all of us to enjoy. With a little effort, anyone can help keep them that way. All you have to be is someone who cares.